suddenly, like bam, out of nowhere. An epiphany, and you say, yeah, it, it has to work. How often does it happen in your life that you have a thought that nobody else has ever had before? Now I understand, and it's, it's amazing. And they're addictive as well, they're completely addictive. And there, on that piece of paper, is the proof that you're doing something that nobody ever has done before, and that's very exciting. I work in symplectic geometry. Symplectic topology. Number theory. Algebraic geometry. Mirror symmetry. I'm really fascinated about the connections between geometry and physics. I use algebraic methods to study patterns, symmetries and structures. Grassmannians and quiver flag varieties. The theory of Euler systems. The nearby Lagrangian conjecture, um, which is, <laughs> has recently become a life, aim, a life aim of mine to prove it. It's difficult not, not really knowing what to do. You will get stuck, you will feel, feel frustrated. You've got to understand it in your own terms. No one's telling you the right way to do it. You need to be stupid, so to, to ask stupid questions. So being motivated to keep asking the questions. And then that moment when it clicks or when you finally solve something. It's this rush of enthusiasm and excitement, huge relief and joy. So. The results arise so natural inside us. It's, it's like they, they're already there and they're just waiting for us. Now, it's not that it's all in your head, but it's a much more inventive and artistic discipline. You have these unwritten rules about beauty and elegance and trying to get where you want to be in the nicest way possible. And these rules are a bit vague, but still, most people, if they see a beautiful proof, most people will agree, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's very beautiful. The program is structured in a way that lets you find out what you really like, what you really want to do. You're no longer being told what to learn. I really like that the first year had lots of courses and that you got to pick your supervisor at the end. You can try out different supervisors. I think that's incredibly valuable. You kind of get bombarded with new ideas every week. You're like looking at things in a, in a broader way, but you're also specializing and looking, so you're looking at like one very specific thing, but with as many tools as you, as you have. And it was four years as opposed to three. Which is... London has the, is one of the few European cities that has different very good universities. You're really a PhD student of all three universities for the entire four years. These three universities is that, for instance, for number theory and geometry, they collaborate all together. You can choose supervisors at three universities and, and there are a lot of people, for example, in the year, in the year above us, who have one supervisor, one university, one supervisor, and another university. They spend different days in different places. They're exposed, therefore, to a wider range of supervisors. London probably has more geometers than any other city, at least in the UK. It's an incredibly active place to be, and there's tons of seminars going on. It's really, really a good, great place to be. This is one of the, um, the things that I most liked of, of the LSGT program. If you had a problem, you had a lot of people to talk with. We all discuss things amongst us, so everybody knows a bit more about a particular uh, field, so you get to see a bit more. There are so many students coming together to the same place, and so they, they talk to each other, they explain things to each other, they all come with different backgrounds. I think it can be very isolating to do a PhD in some places where no one else knows anything about what you're doing. I wasn't kind of aware of how good that collaborative aspect would be before I came. It's also really enjoyable, the fact that you can, uh, that you can talk about your passion and the fact that your passion is your job, it's, it's a wonderful like, mix. So all three being an undergrad, you are paying to go to university and have someone teach you maths, and you're, you're paying to go there and have them teach you what maths they want. And then suddenly it's like a huge paradigm shift because they start paying you and you can choose the maths. So it's like both aspects get way better. A big part of the beauty is the for me at least, is the surprising otherness about it. You have to learn this language before you can appreciate the beauty properly. Once you do, it's, it's the same kind of beauty as is in music and other things like that. If you're like a visual artist and, and you 
you know, you look at paintings all the time and, and you're, the more you look at them, the more structure you see and the more beauty you detect in, in a painting like that. And, and math is like that. It's how the nature communicates with, with us. It must be beautiful. Gosh, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Essential ingredients are uh, simplicity, elegance. So if you can state it in a very elegant way or if you can prove it in a very elegant way, it's incredibly beautiful. Thank you.